What's good, YouTube? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. We have another episode. Uh, today we're gonna be reacting to something I really have near and dear to my heart. Um, the UAE successfully launches the Arabic world's first Mars mission uh, rocket. I love space. Anything dealing with space, anything to do with, with above Earth, airplanes. Uh, aerospace and aeronautical, I, I love it, that's me, you know. So I'm hoping CNN doesn't flag this video um, because I got off of CNN or if they just copyright it, cool, I have no problem. It's just that I enjoy space activities. So yeah, we're just going to react to it and see what's up. Alright, hope you guys have an awesome day. If you're new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notification every time I upload. You know, all right. So let's just get into it. Enough talking. Heads to Mars. Oh, ah, that's a good name. So that is the sound of history. Whoa. The sound of hope okay. itself. With the UAE's mission to Mars. My favorite is the Falcon Even 9. It's made of metal and silicon. The probe no, was impacted by COVID-2 as the crisis got a lot worse back in April. Teams rushed to get that spacecraft in place. The probe made its trip to Japan to the launch site that itself took days, several months earlier than originally planned. Special flights and visas had to be arranged for the engineers. They also had to allow enough time, of course, to quarantine before uh, Hope's arrival from the Emirates. But that's all done and dusted now with the Hope Probe well on its way. And this isn't just the journey of a probe. It's the journey of a nation and in many ways the journey of this region. That's it. Theatrics of a space launch, but with an entirely new twist. That was the first ever countdown for a rocket launch in Arabic. As the Arab world's first ever mission to another planet rockets towards the heavens. That's this so. is the UAE's mission to Mars, aptly named Hope for reasons economic and scientific. Wow. Um, we as a people do not know despair and we do not know the impossible and that is why we chose the name, the Hope Probe. Its trip there will see it roam through the solar system alone for seven months, flying itself into orbit around the red planet by early next year. A long trip for a craft hurtling oh, at an astronomical pace of some 121,000 kilometers per hour. Fast enough to get from London to New York in two minutes flat. Once it arrives, it'll start soaking up data about the Martian atmosphere. That could help us make changes at home on Earth. What this program allowed us to do is to develop a very complex system that needs to be robust, work semi-autonomously, um, and be able to collect scientific data that is viable for um, for the long-term understanding of our planet. But while the launch took place from a tiny island just off mainland Japan, its real story is a journey from the Emirates to Mars. And it's not only a story of pure hope, but one of ambition. The UAE is trying to start a new era in space exploration, transform its economy and so its fate. It needs to move on from its economic dependence on pumping oil out of the ground, especially as COVID-19 caused a slump in prices. Reaching Mars is not the main goal here. It's a mean for a much bigger goal. It's about the future of our economy, uh, about creating the post-oil economy, a creative, innovative, and a competitive uh, economy. That's Every what's single up. one of the engineers and scientists who built the probe are Emirati. And so the price tag, which a science minister said was 200 million, was never really an issue. Somebody asked me, how much will this project cost? And I replied, this is an investment. It is not a cost. That's the stop. If you could, then, if, you could if a country could look at it, look at it as people like that, not a cost, but investment, 
you have Both for the probe itself and the country sending it towards the heavens a step into the unknown but the hope is the Mars probe will prove to be a giant leap in the right direction well, ground control in Dubai has received its first signals from the Hope probe. The Emirates Mars mission control room is where it is all happening this hour, and that is where we are connecting you to Omran Sharaf, who you just saw in my report, uh, the report that we just filed uh, earlier. He is the project manager of the Emirates Mars mission. The launch, sir, was in the middle of the night, UAE time. How are you and the team feeling? Have you had any sleep? Didn't get much sleep, Patty. Uh, so it was around 2 a.m. Uh, Dubai time. Yeah. Exactly tired. A, a hugely ambitious mission for a country uh, that only marks its 50th anniversary next year. There is an immense feeling of pride here in the UAE. Oh, man, explain why Mars and why now? Uh, so why Mars is basically the government wanted to put a big goal, an ambitious goal in front of its youth, the Emirat youth, and also to send a message, uh, as you mentioned earlier, to the Arab youth, uh, to inspire them to go into sciences and technology. Uh, so there are objectives behind the mission that are linked to the UAE, and there are also the scientific objectives. Uh, so when, scientifically, if you look at it, uh, the reason why humanity is exploring Mars is because uh, scientists believe uh, that uh, the planet might have been at a certain point uh, similar uh, to Earth in its feature. However, it reached a point in which it started losing its feature, and one big part of it reason behind mm. it is actually the, 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 the loss of its atmosphere. So better understanding what happened on Mars could help us better understand the changes that could happen and are happening around uh, our planet. It's a busy month for Mars. The UAE competing with the US and China, both of which are launching similar missions this summer both have massive resources it has to be said how are you hoping that your mission will stand out and what will success look like to you what would constitute a major breakthrough discovery sir so the Emirates mentioned before that uh, the space program is more of a mean and a tool for a much bigger goal. Uh, so going to Mars is just it's not the main objective here. It's about uh, stimulating the different sectors and using this mission as a catalyst for uh, for a disruptive change in the academic sector, in the economic sector, and industrial sectors. Uh, so basically, the, the government wanted to expedite the, 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 the change in, the, in, the, in, the, in these sectors, uh, wanted to create uh, the, the R&D culture amongst the youth and have them uh, go sure. into STEM. Uh, so that's why it looked into Mars. So when it comes to comparing to what maybe other nations do, it's, which are usually just focus on sciences, for us it's about science, but also it's about other objectives. Not just yeah, that's fascinating. We, we, we spoke, Omran, to um, some of the youngsters uh, here, uh, some of the really uh, little guys and girls um, who are so inspired. Just have a listen to what some of them told us. As I said, the whole mission is my whole. Because this country has achieved many firsts despite its young age, we as youth constantly have sources of inspiration and the confidence to do anything. Yeah, and uh, we've got more of that in the hour to come. The UAE Omran has set an ambitious target of creating a colony on Mars by 2117. Um, is that realistic? And, and, and how would that be beneficial? 2117? Uh, so when it comes to Mars 2117, actually, uh, the reason why the government announced it is that uh, because of the Emirates Mars mission, we had students switching majors going to sciences. We had uh, universities starting new programs, scientific programs that they didn't have before. Uh, so the question that we always got from them was that what comes after uh, the Emirates Mars mission? So it was basically a commitment from the government, from the government to the youth, to the Emirates youth, uh, and, and, and to everyone, is that we are guaranteeing new jobs in this sector, in this area, for the next 100 years. This is, not, this is one side of it. The other side of this is that basically, 
the UAE wanted to address its national challenges when it comes to water resources, when it comes to uh, food resources, when it comes to alternative energy, which we believe is critical for our future, for the sustainable development of the UAE. Uh, so it wanted to do that through this mission. So it's not about really building a colony on Mars. It's about uh, helping putting the first human on Mars one day, but it's also about having the capacity and capability to address these challenges that if one nation individual decides to send someone to Mars, uh, that we as a UAE were able to contribute by bringing these technologies, this kind of knowledge uh, to, 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 to these countries. On top of that also, to use these technologies to address our national challenges. If it works on Mars, it should work on Earth. Mars is a very harsh environment. Uh, going from Earth to Mars is also is very difficult. Right. So, so by, by, by developing this technology, you can really use it uh, on, on, in the UAE and, and in regions that have harsh environments. Oh, Ram, this is fascinating stuff. We wish you the absolute best. We'll check in with you as you uh, begin to uh, receive information and data from that probe for the time being. We will let you go and get some uh, sleep. These guys, I know, I've been talking to them for years now. They have been working so hard on this. They absolutely deserve the applause and also yes. um, some time off. Uh, Oberon, thank you. Do you? That's crazy, though. That's crazy. Year 2117. No, no, not 20. Yeah, year 2117. That's, yeah. That's crazy. They have a seeing freaking person I take a lot of man. Sorry about that, but anyway. Um it's crazy that they have they plan from that far. You know, it's crazy. But nevertheless, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash the like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new here. And by the way, I always wanted to know, right? If they want people to go to, if they, if they have a way for us to go to Mars, right? It takes seven months for a rocket to go to Mars from Earth. What are they going to do when it's time for people to start going to Mars? If rocket is already travel, traveling at supersonic, supersonic speeds, how will they get people there to Earth quicker than that? That's the question I want to ask. If you guys have the answer for that, leave it down below in the comments. But nevertheless, I'm out. Peace. Remember, the world is yours.